Hey guys, absolutely awesome to have you here today. I got a really good video. It's gonna help you pick up some swing speed, get in the rhythm. If you feel like you're struggling when you're trying to crank those drivers out there, it feels like your arms and your body are totally disjointed. They're not working together. We're gonna to talk about how to get that great weight shift, how to get that nice power draw, and I got some really simple steps to do this. Let's go get started. All right guys, so if you're joining us from YouTube, remember to click that subscribe button. I got a ton of great videos coming out for you all this year, really gonna help you with your game. But if you don't click that subscribe, you're not gonna be notified when those are released. All right, so let's start with one of the most common problems that I see, which is weight shift. And the biggest problem is people are starting their weight shift way too late. So for example here, to make a really good powerful swing, and there's been a ton of research on this to all kinds of different scientists that are working in the field of golf. There's these pressure plates, swing catalyst has them, body track has them. Um, even my swing has a new one where it tracks the pressure in both of your feet. And what they're finding with the best players is that players are shifting their weight to the right early in the swing, just like you would in baseball if you're trying to throw a 100 mile an hour fastball, just like most sports. I'm gonna shift that weight to my right foot. So as I start to make my takeaway, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna feel that weight shift to the inside of my right foot, that instep, and now I'm in that powerful position, I'm loaded up. If I was gonna throw a football, that's exactly how I do it. If I was gonna throw a baseball, swing a baseball bat, all those have the same thing in common, which is the weight is going to the right foot early in the backswing. Same thing's happening in golf here. You gotta load up to that right side to get powerful. But what's happening a lot of times and what's been taught is that we go to that right side and we wait all the way until we start the downswing to then shift to the left. Well, that's way too late. If we wait till the downswing to start that weight shift to the left, you're gonna feel like your hands and arms are working across your body. You're gonna feel like you don't have very much power. And to be honest, it's gonna be a lot easier to have that over the top type motion because your right foot and your right arm are coming down at the same time. So it can cause a lot of problems in the golf swing. Well, I've got a great drill for you that's gonna solve that. We need to get up, get out of your chair right now. If you're sitting at home, do these drills with me. It's really gonna help you. So let's lose the golf club here to start. What I want you to do is just put your hands and arms across your shoulders. Now the, the weight shift should happen like this. As I go into the, my backswing, my hips are gonna be fairly high, like at the top of a U. And then you can imagine as I start down, I'm gonna be shifting to the left, my hips are dropping, and I'm really exaggerating here just so, just so you can see. But as I start my downswing, the hips drop, and then everything comes through to the left. So we go to the right side, then we start to shift to the left, and then back up. So my hips are kind of making this U-type motion. Go ahead and do five or 10 of those where you really feel like I'm getting my knees separated, I'm getting into the ground, and then I'm pushing into the ground to the finish. So I'm going right side, drop down, over to the left side. Do 10 or 15 of those to really get into the rhythm. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it even more exaggerated. I want you to grab a club now, and I want you to put your feet together, put both the feet touching each other. And what I want you to do, as soon as you're doing your takeaway, go ahead and start to step forward. And I'm gonna show you why this is so important here in a second. So start to step forward, then I'm gonna step into the ground and swing on through. So what's actually happening, what the best players are really doing, instead of waiting until the downswing to start that shift to left, what they're really doing is, as the hands are about halfway back, this left arm is parallel, now your weight's gonna start shifting to the left as you're completing your backswing. So your weight really begins to shift left here, even though your club is still going back. And then as I'm coming down in the swing, I've got all this lag, I'm gonna drive that left foot in the ground and then whip that club on through. So the two key pieces here are, we have to start our transition early. So we get to the right side, we start our transition left early. And then number two, I really have to drive down and out with this left leg to sync that up. So 10 or 15 swings, starting with your feet together. As soon as you take that club back, we're gonna start that step and then really come on through there. That's gonna get you that great weight shift. Now the big mistake again I see there is keeping the feet together, going all the way to the top, and then trying to swing down at the same time when you're stepping forward. That's that weak, you know, disjointed move where your arms and your body aren't working together. So get that step early. Now once we've tried that, let's go ahead and kick it up another notch. Let's grab a T here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up to where my left foot is gonna step on that T as I swing, as I swing forward. So I'm gonna set it up to where if I step, it's gonna hit about in the middle of my foot right in the center, and I'm gonna drive that tee down into the ground. So again, start with the feet together, 
really let that weight go early. And I'm really gonna try to smash that down into the turf. Now I did catch a little bit of it. I actually broke the tee in half there. And that's the idea. It's not about that tee, it's about driving into the ground, really getting a lot of force so you can get that club to whip through contact and get a lot of the speed from it. So again, let's recap on those and then let's take it to the ball. Number one, I want you to feel the hips rotating and then moving right and then left as you're going in the swing. So that's just the overall motion of, this, of the hips. They go to the right, shift down and to the left, and then come on through. Then we're gonna do a few where we take the early step, swing on through. Once we get comfortable with that, we're gonna do that same early step, but I'm really gonna drive into the ground. I feel like I'm driving that tee hard into the ground to get a lot more speed. Now finally, let's put this to the test. Let me swing one where I go to the top and then I start down with my weight shift and my arms at the same time. So that's gonna be kind of like this, where I go to the top and then I'm trying to shift my weight and swing, but I'm keeping my feet together. That's that misconception out there that we need to shift to the left once we're at the top of the swing. Let's see what kind of swing speed we can get when we do that. I actually hit that one dead straight, pretty solid, about as good as I could hit one doing that. So it looks all right. We can get a little bit of speed doing that, but it felt like my hands and arms just weren't synced up. My body wasn't synced up and I was lucky to hit one pretty good. So I got 109 miles an hour club head speed doing it the incorrect way, 234 on the carry. Now let's do it the right way. Let's work on that weight shift. I'm gonna hit one doing that weight shift we just did. I'm gonna feel like my weight starts to left early and then I'm really driving into the ground there. Let's see how much more swing speed that we can get. There we go, much better. Same shot, about on the same line. Both of them were straight, but I guarantee you that one got a little bit more carry distance and a lot more swing speed. So there, that shot, 118 club head speed, so about nine more miles an hour. 281 carry and 314 total distance. With a range ball, that's pretty daggone good. I'll take that all day. So now that we've got this weight shift, that's one of the big keys to power. Let me give you two really quick tips that are gonna help you to put this to use. You got the swing speed, now we need to get rid of that over the top, get you coming more from the inside and letting that club release. So piece number one, you're gonna notice that all the long drivers do this. You won't see any long drivers, any guys that are on TV bombing at 400 yards with the ball back in their stance and their weight on their left side at the dress. Remember, we gotta get our weight on the right side early and then shift it to the left early. So what you're gonna see is that ball up in their stance. If I put that ball kind of on the instep of my left foot, that's a good place. What that's gonna help me do is to launch up on the ball. With a driver, I'm actually hitting slightly up. That's gonna get those big booming drives. You see those guys hit it a mile in the air and it just keeps flying and flying. That's gonna help you do that. Number two, I'm gonna make sure my chin is behind the ball. Again, when my chin gets farther back, one, it's gonna promote that more upward swing. Number two, it's gonna promote more of an inside swing. So if I'm tilted back like this, it's a lot easier for me to come from the inside and catch that ball right from the slot. If I'm up here, now I'm gonna chop down kind of steep on that ball. It's not gonna be as good. So those are the first two pieces. Number three, I want you to go ahead, make sure your hand is turned a little bit more under the club. If you can imagine your palm being a little bit more under that finger, your thumb, being pointed more toward your right shoulder. Now I'm in a position where I can really release that club from the inside. And then the last piece, let's get that elbow in. So we got our weight shift. Now we got our setup. Hopefully I won't hit this little deer out there in front of us. Let's go ahead and give it a good rip. There we go, just slightly to the left. I feel like I get some good swing speed on that one. Had that nice draw that everybody's looking for. Let's see what the club head speed was. So again, improper weight shift, 108 and 109. That one, 118.9, so almost 119 miles an hour. 265, wasn't quite as solid as the one before, but I was in a good position. I got behind the ball and I had that powerful weight shift. So if you can put those pieces together, you guys are gonna pick up some serious speed. Now, if you're joining us from YouTube, one thing that we can do from the Top Speed Golf system that really helps with this is what's called the move. And with that, we talked about coming more from the inside, getting that right arm in a position to where we can come down in the slot and come in nice and shallow with the ball. 
What helps with that is what we call the move, which is shallowing that club out from the top, getting this left wrist bowed, and then starting to square that face up early. Now I have a great preview of one of my best videos from the move. It's the tennis racket drill. And if you click the link that pops up on the screen, the I card on the screen, or the link down below in the description, you'll be able to get instant access to that video, start shallowing out that club, start coming from the slot, playing a lot better golf. Let's go and get started. Good player problems. We're gonna talk about shallowing that club shaft out as we're starting down, as we're doing this rotating of the face that we worked, about, worked on in the last video. As we start this downswing, what you'll see with, with basically all uh, of the, the top players is instead of coming kind of over the top and letting the hands come out away from their body, letting the club come out away from their body, again, coming down steep into the ball and then having to open up, kind of fillet open the face and add loft to it, the flattening of the shaft should happen as soon as we start down. So as we start this downswing, what we want to have happening here, you can imagine that if I draw a line from the hosel of my club up through my right elbow, that's my swing plane line, my elbow plane. As I go to the top of the swing, I'm going to be slightly above that. And then as I start down, I want my hands to start to shallow out. I want the club to shallow out inside of this elbow plane. And at the same time, I'm going to be rotating. 